Hi everybody, my name's Michelle and I'm a Melody GB here on FlossTube, but also on Instagram and Etsy as well. Welcome to the Sunday morning briefing. You might be able to tell that I'm filming at a slightly different time. My videos have been taking so long to upload recently that I am trying to film them now on a Saturday afternoon and see whether that extra time span is going to actually help to get them uploaded. So this is going to be primarily the Great British Sampler Weekend Shakedown. I did think about doing a video last week after the first couple of days, but quite honestly, I was pretty speechless. <laughs> I didn't really know what I was going to say. Um, blown away, absolutely blown away. But I will tell you a little bit more about that. And obviously I've got lots of things to show you. I've got lots of haul, lots of stitchy kindness, just so many goodies to share with you. It was incredible. Anyway, before we get on to that, I, last week on Monday, I released Stanley. Now Stanley is, well technically he's the second, but I'll explain that bit in a minute, but Stanley is part of my Parliament of Owls series. So it's a little series of owls that you can make on perforated paper uh, using, well I've given you the colours, but quite honestly, these are really great stash busters. Use whatever colours you've got to hand. And I've put little beads on mine. So his little stars are beaded. But if you've, have, if you've got beads, put them on. If you haven't, just pick a similar floss colour. It really doesn't matter. So that's Stanley. Now he came out on Monday. And I said that my aim was to try and release a new owl every week in October. So let me show you the next one. This is Clement. So this is Clement. So there he is. Isn't he fabulous? I love him. I love him. So I've used DMCs. There is a little bit of DMC Etoile in the eyes, but you probably won't be able to tell that on the screen. And a few beads. Again, just ones that I had around so these are some mill hill sort of silver gray beads and there's some around the eyes as well and then i used a few little beads this time to make a beaded hanger rather than a ribbon hanger and he's finished with black velvet on the back sticky black velvet so this is clement so he goes nicely with stanley and there are several others there are several others in the pipeline they might even end up whoops come back around they might even end up being more than one a week now if you are going to stitch in london check your emails because marie has sent around a little email and it has a little freebie in it for me so this is for just for people going to stitch in london and this is herbert so herbert is there for you in your emails to stitch and actually at Stitch in London I am doing a class about how to finish perforated paper pieces so you can either bring um, Herbert or you can bring one of your other perforated paper pieces so the reason that I've brought all of them obviously is to show you my new finishes but I just wanted to show you how they're starting to look all together as a little collection and as i said there's quite a few more <laughs> there's a few more than weeks in october so um yeah <laughs> i'm gonna do one a week in october and you never know they might just keep getting drip fed every time i fancy doing one but they are fabulous so this one's a freebie for those doing stitch in london not available separately yet this one will be available hopefully later on today if not already and Stanley is already available. So stitch them however you like, whatever colours you like. If you've got some beads, pop some beads on. Either use a ribbon hanger or make a little beaded hanger. It doesn't matter. However you fancy, you can be stitching the Parliament of Owls. Right, let's put those up there for now. <clears throat> Excuse me, fog in the throat. The other news that I just want to make sure that you're aware of is that Sophia Stafford is now available. Um, we released her before the Great British Sampler weekend in the end, and she is available in paper copy from Patchwork Rabbit. And they are also doing kits um, and threads and all sorts. Everything you need, you can get from Patchwork Rabbit or you can get the PDF download on my Etsy store if you would like. So that's Sophia. I would have shown you the model 
they had to give her to Catherine. I gave her back to Catherine. She's gone to stay at the Patrick Rabbit for a little while because they had, I know they had a lot of people go into the shop um, last week. So yeah, that's where she's gone. That's where she's gone. I had to give her up at some point. Right. Before we do that, let's just do a couple of other little um, admin pieces. Okay, I feel like saying your exits are here, here and here. <laughs> a couple of little admin pieces. <laughs> um, a couple of weeks ago, possibly even three weeks ago now, we had a competition for a copy of Pendle Hill from Samplers and Stitches. Um, this is Carol. Carol's got an Etsy store and I will put the information down below. And the winner of that was Barbara DeLong. So I hope I've said that right. Um, and I've just put, I'll put your comment up there. If you contact me by email or through Instagram Messenger, I will pass on your email details to Carol and she can send out your copy of samplers and stitches now there is a discount code going on until the end of october i'm going to, have to put it across the screen along the bottom because i can't remember exactly what it is and i wouldn't want to give it out wrong so um there's a code across the bottom there we go freebie let's do the freebie and then i'm on great british sample weekend i'm there i'm there i'm back there this is the freebie this is by Crosetta gogo and I saw this actually on Paola from Pantini Pantini's Instagram because in the finishing of it, Crossetta Go Go used a button, one of her acorn buttons on the top of the pillow and it looked fabulous. And Paola had um, stitched it as well. So this is a little squirrel in a little cloche or cloche, depending on how posh you are. And they also did last year a robin. And I seem to remember showing you the robin one as well. Um, the, you get this from... I'm pretty sure it's from their, it's either their Facebook group or their blog, but wherever it is, the December one with the Robin on that I've shown you before is just down below. So you can get that one as well, make a little set. Right, great British sampler weekend. What an amazing, amazing weekend. I can't not pay tribute to Nicola and her team of people. Everybody that helped to organise the great British sampler weekend did the best job they possibly could. It was, it was amazing. Um, everybody, I just met so many lovely people. Um, the food was amazing. The talks were amazing. So we had, we had quite a lot of talks and probably I didn't realise actually how many talks there were going to be from such amazing, amazing people. And I was just glued to every talk. Um, I know a lot of people sort of sat and stitched and I was just glued, glued to everything because these are world experts they were absolutely world experts and they were there talking to me so it was great it was fabulous so we got there I got there hmm, just after 4 30 something like that and we went and picked our tables and there was a, a welcome gift there and it was in our fish and chip box so this was our project for the weekend um excuse me now in it had all sorts of little bits and bobs now the other thing I shouldn't forget to say is that the sponsor of the weekend was also Hobby House Needleworks so they provided some of the bits and bobs that went into the box and that appeared later on in the day so let me just show you what was in here now I have to say I can't actually attest to everything being in here because some things have gone a little bit astray but we obviously had our project which was this one, A. Robson, a red and green one. Now, Nicola did talk a little bit about this project and we had all sorts of stitches, people stitching on Ada, people stitching on linen. And so she wanted to pick a project that was going to be suitable for everyone. So you could either do the, <coughs> excuse me, you could either do the sampler or you could do the little, um, little pin pillow. It's a 3D one, it's like a box finish one. Um, and I think she said there was enough fabric to do both, but not enough thread. There was only enough thread to pick one. Um, so I chose to do the sampler and then I'm going to do some bits from the pin cushion, but turn it into perhaps a simpler little pin cushion or a little scissor fold or something like that. So that was our project. We had the thread, which was silk thread, which we could then wind on 
our oops, little Saju thread winders. We also had some pins. Now these pins were around the fabric. So the fabric was in a roll. So I'll show you in a minute because obviously I unrolled it to start stitching on it. Beautiful red and green. Um, I think they came from Minnie McBean. Minnie McBean was there um, with a lot of her things and I'm pretty sure that that's where they came from. We had a little um, set of needles. Now I found so many needles all over the hotel. <laughs> It was like every four or five steps I kept finding another needle. There's an, I had no idea where they were coming from. So I have got not only this little pot of needles, but in my badge, every time I found one, I found it, put it in the back of my badge. So I've got about 20 needles, size 28 needles, all from the Great British Sample Weekend. So there was some of that. There was these lovely um, tape measure and everything, everything had like a little charm on it or a little something else on it. Um, a Hobby House Needleworks tin, which slides open like that, and I think this is a magnet, although I've not tried it yet. But a lovely finished tin. We had a quiz, which was really good as well. It was different film titles. I've already taken the quiz to school um, and tried it out on a few people at school. Um, we had that. the history of fish and chips in our box and we also had a well, this appeared on the table I'm not sure whether this was in the box because it was sat in my box but I don't remember seeing it originally it's a little and got glasses cleaner so I'm not entirely sure of the origin of that whether somebody brought it round but I found it in my box when I'd been away from my table a little bit so I have to attest to not knowing. And that was the thing, you, you got up to talk to people and then you'd come back and there'd be things on your table that people had brought round. So the project is this one. And it's mine was an, on a piece of 36 count wood smoke by Tabby Cat Linen. So I've kind of got the border and I've started just filling in the red and the green. And we got a really nice big piece it's probably half of a fat quarter but long ways rather than short ways or long eighth is it they call it so I started on that now I didn't start that actually until I got home on the Saturday night um, I didn't stay in the hotel because my mum uh, lives in Borton on the Water so her house is in Borton on the Water which is only about half an hour from the uh, from Swindon so I went back there and um so yeah when the time I got back on Saturday night I thought oh I'm gonna I'm gonna start that I'm gonna give that a start because I had been really focused on stitching the project that I took um sounds like Captain Chaos is on her way <laughs> that's the trouble with filming on an afternoon there's the lawns being mowed there's a song being sung so this is where I'd got to with my Norfolk Susanna Steele. So there she is. So I've put in, I actually did quite well stitching wise, I think. I've put in a lot more over this side and I've started making my way down. And I just love stitching on this. I just love the colours. It's so muted and sophisticated and I just love it. Just love it. So on the Friday night, we had scheduled to have a talk um, from Dawn Cook Ronigan, but they actually had to move that because the shopping, people just wanted to shop. You had tables and tables and tables laid out of beautiful hands across the sea things and then more fabric than I've ever seen in my life. It was amazing and people just wanted to shop. <laughs> and I think Nicola even said, next time we do this we're just having a shopping day <laughs> because um poor dawn got moved to the following day which was it worked out brilliantly she did a fabulous fabulous talk and i will um talk a little bit about her her things in a minute but just 
there was just too much too much eye candy too many things to be to be looking at and to be touching and to be and to be buying so it was amazing it was amazing so saturday we were asked on saturday on friday night to clear the tables so that they could leave some things on our tables so when we came back the next morning we each had one of these sat in our spot and it says on the back great british sampler weekend so these lovely little drawers which i know have been shown on various different floss tubes and uh, things before but it was so nice to have it have it personalized on the back now i found this very useful because lots and lots of people were bringing lots of little, little gifts around so i filled mine up with various different different things let me show you what the things that are in there now so there's my badge and all of the needles that i kept flying, finding around the place we also had oops that's the lining for our pillowcases if we uh, not pillowcases pin pillows who we were making them little needle keeps from under the garden moon um Evelyn brought those round. Uh, the lady from Pensacola Beach. Oh, I can't remember her name. Now, this is one thing I have learned is actually that when I do gifts at the next retreat, I'm going to make sure I put my name on them because with all the best will in the world, when you speak to people, you think, oh yeah, I remember, I remember who they, who gave that, what was their name? And I, um, <laughs> and it goes so quickly. Um, so, Sherry Campbell bought some pins round. So that was one little drawer of, of goodies that I had. Let's just pop that back in there. I think I'm going to get some more of these drawers because they're really good. Um, that's a table gift from Catherine from Patrick Rabbit. She's giving, giving those out. Um, now, Sensible Lady on our table was giving out needles this is from lani who's a lovely lady she she bought a couple of charts from me that i uh, i bought to the sampler weekend um some little utah chocolates now they were very nice i've had one of those already this came from one of my table mates and this is a jane greenoff who was one of the speakers this is a little magnetic um needle minder really cute little pin ball love 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 um mary brought around some pins this one came from traditional stitches so this is actually now this is why i was hoping to film downstairs because of the table but we are in a balancing situation at the moment so this came from traditional stitches this is one of their new exclusives with um, Hands Across the Sea and Johnson, which I have pre-ordered. Um, and it say it says traditional stitches on it. It's a little three inch ruler with a lovely little, um, what do you call those things? Tassel. What else have I got in here? Some sugar soap is it sugar soap i'm sure it's sugar soap from x stitch birder now i met a lovely lady called louise and she gave me a little bag of um australia inspired things some kangaroo paw cottage garden threads a tim tam because she knows i like eating stuff a little australia koala and a little sort of charm floss ring ring bling lovely and it's louise's 60th birthday on the monday so happy birthday again louise i'm sure you had the best weekend and then of course i picked up lots and lots of floss cards people were bling bringing floss cards around and i had taken some of them to give out as the original ones. I like to think they're the original ones. 
and another lovely lady called Julie had included some little pins with um, cotton rails on the top. Cotton rails. So let me put that down. So let me tell you about the speakers. The speakers that we had were amazing. As I said, the speakers were amazing. The first one was Dawn Cook Ronigan. And this is Dawn's book. I didn't buy this there. I already had this. I should have taken it and got it signed, really. But she was talking all about, um, not specifically about needle rolls and her sifts and things like that, but she was talking about her collection. Talk about make a room green. <laughs> Absolutely green with envy. She had taken photographs of her her collecting room and was sort of going through a few specific pieces. And, oh, the room was green, I tell you. It was a brilliant, brilliant talk. Um, sorry, I'm just getting my hastily scribbled notes. Ray Niles um, from Red Barn, Barn Samplers, such a lovely, engaging woman. Um, absolutely really felt a bit of a, a bit of a connection to Ray, actually. Um, just the way she spoke and she reminds me of a very good friend I've got over here and a lovely, lovely lady. Both of our dads were auctioneers as well, which I think helps. Um, so Ray was talking about how she came in, came to her collection of samplers, which if you ever want a tale of amazing, amazing luck, then that is it. But she's also just released um, part of a sampler called Sarah Sophia Rayton. Rayton? Yeah. Um, and she's released... Just the top part she's done a little bit of a reimagining by moving a couple of the borders around and she's done uh no there isn't i was just seeing there's a, a picture of the whole sampler she's done just a sort of a top section so she gave us each one of those and from maison linen sorry I'm getting blown out a little bit and from maison linen she gave us a fat quarter of the fabric to stitch it on so that was amazing thank you so much ray that was I loved meeting you. I loved it. Um, we also had Kathleen Littleton. So Kathleen, let me just find the project. Kathleen was talking about her journey in antique samplers and she is the brains behind Cross Stitch Antiques. So this is her latest one um, or one of her newest ones. So this is Annie Matilda Moss. Now, my chart's already got a little bit creased because <laughs> she's been on a little bit of a journey with me already. So she was went to Daglingworth School. Now, Daglingworth is it's probably 20 miles from Swindon. But when I drive to Swindon, I drive from Porton on the Water to Sirencester and then to Siren, from Sirencester to Swindon. Well, if I go, instead of turning left at Sirencester, if I turned right by three miles, I got to Daglingworth because being a Cotswold girl, I knew where Dag Daglingworth was. So I decided to go to Daglingworth and to, on the on the Sunday morning and to take Annie Matilda Moss with me and see if I could find the, the manor. And if not, I could at least take a photograph of her with the sign. So that's what I did. And I managed to find the manor. Now, Daglingworth is not huge. Um, so it wasn't too hard to find the manor. And I managed to take a photograph of her with the manor. Now the manor's changed where the gates are. The gates are much further down the um, down the driveway now, so you can't get as close. But I managed to get a picture of her with her old school, so I managed to take her home. But Kathleen was really, really engaging, lovely speaker, and uh, really easy to see. Needlework passion. It was it was great. Um, who else? Let me just show you the other another project. Whoop. I have to get that in a minute because you need to see that. So this lady spoke. So this is Violets and Verses. And she's given us this project as well, which is a beautiful project on a spool. So she gave us the fabric and the thread and she also gave us some chicken soup and 
put it all in what she called a chicken soup protector because she was telling us a story of a sampler that she just finished stitching which if I remember correctly was a Bristol and she made the mistake of eating within a sort of 20 mile radius of it and managed to get chicken noodle soup on the stitch that she was just finishing so she was she was lovely lovely lady to, to listen to as well ah stay honestly if you could see the abject chaos here we also were treated now I've, I've gone out of order here we were treated to becky scott from whitney antiques lovely lady lovely lovely lady so knowledgeable um and just spoke with such a wealth of experience and she was talking about samplers stitched by poorer girls um not just orphan samplers because obviously we also had a talk by Claudia talking about Bristol samplers but she talked about other orphan samplers and other sort of samplers stitched by poorer girls which was really really interesting um we also had Jane Greenoff the amazing Jane Greenoff she came and spoke to us she is very funny very funny lady <laughs> um Sissy Bailey Smith now I must admit to being slightly unaware of Sissy Bailey Smith um, and Gentle Pursuits designs before um, this weekend but she again passed out this beautiful <laughs> booklet with a project in it let me just see if I can find a picture of the project so it's how to make a, um, a stitching pouch a self-lined needle book and she had others there that have come from her company, which is Gentle Pursuit Designs. I'm not sure I've said that. They were amazing. She had another sampler and she talked about um, Scottish samplers and how to recognise a Scottish sampler. Now, I'm very lucky to own quite a few Scottish samplers. So um, it was very interesting to see a few of the motifs that I knew were reoccurring, um, but perhaps we hadn't realised were so, so ubiquitous for Scottish samplers. Can't say that. Can't speak. So that was amazing we also got the thing that's just fallen on the floor there so two seconds so this was a um a gift from hobby house and hands across the sea together and again came in a lovely red pouch and it was a bristol scissor block which is amazing with a lovely little pair of scissors in fabulous who else did we hear from? As I said, we heard from Claudia Dutcher Kistler um, all about the Bristol samplers. Now, some of our group were going to Bristol to the Muller Museum on the Monday. I couldn't go because obviously he was teaching, but there is the exhibition is open several more times between now and just into the new year. So I found a date that I can go and I am determined to go to the Bristol Sampler Museum or to the Bristol Orphanage Museum and see the samplers and the other needlework that was there. Um, Krista Gramer gave us a talk as well. She from Di Just Stitching Along, she took samplers all the way from all the different parts of um, England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, but not quite Wales. She didn't have any from Wales. And I said that to her afterwards and she said, yes, I know. It's a huge hole in my collection. I really need to get some Welsh samplers. So um, it, that was fascinating as well. Just, I'm sure I've missed people. I don't want to miss anyone because it was it was amazing. Um, Simone from Swadi Day. Now she did say how to pronounce it and I, I still get it wrong. Also spoke to us and showed us some of the, the work that she's done um with freebies with band samplers um and also little square almost like darning samplers um they were amazing love 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 those so i can't wait to get my hands on some more of those right what else did i buy so let me show you what i got haul wise i think i was quite sedate i think if you look at what i could have bought i might insert a little clip of the table now i actually took a picture of the table um way after this is like sunday morning so if you can imagine this table times about 10 then um you'll understand what we had to choose from
So I got Ruth Gibb, which I've liked for ages. Now, Nicola didn't have loads and loads of charts there. She had lots of kind of other bits and bobs, things that you don't always get the chance to buy. But I did like Ruth Gibb and I've liked Ruth Gibb for ages. So I grabbed Ruth Gibb. She also had her new one, which is called Mary Ann Fitzgibbon. Fitzgibbon. And that is Mary Ann. And she had the model there, which was stitched by Sue from Minnie McBeans. And I just loved it. The reason I really liked it, a little bit of self uh, self appreciation, is it was stitched on the 28th of July, which is my birthday. So, plus I think I may actually even just turn this into a red. I don't know. I'm not sure I'm going to keep the colours. I might just turn it into a red. But I liked it. I had also pre-ordered, let me just put this down, I had pre-ordered this, so excuse the crinkling, so this is some fabric that Nicola has started to do, which has got prints of her samplers on, so this is the one that I particularly liked. There are loads and loads of beautiful samplers on there. Now I know I'm never going to get around to stitching all of them. So I thought if I get the fabric, then I can make some uh, project bags or maybe do some quilting and things like that. So I, I am going to stitch this one though. I absolutely love Mrs. Campbell. So that is definitely when I will get around to stitching. But for now, a piece of fabric with them on will suffice. Now, from Tabby Cat, I bought some linen. Now, the one piece of linen or the one linen I really, really did want was creme brulee. So I bought a yard of it. 36 count I bought a yard of it I bought a yard of it there was lots and lots and lots of other fabrics there so many fabrics and I think it's uh Michelle had said that it was the biggest collection of tabby cat linen there had ever been in any place at one time so there was everything from 14 count all the way up to sort of 20 count I think and then from 28 count all the way to 56 count and so much to choose from and she was she would cut it for you uh, you could mix and match she had a, a special show deal on or special week, weekend deal but it was the tabby cat that i really really wanted their creme brulee sorry that i really really wanted and then i don't know what came over me i'm not sure what came over me but something did and i decided i also needed a piece of 46 count I think because the models for the Hands Across the Sea are very often done on either 40 count or 46 count, I just decided that I wanted to give it a try because I wanted to stitch some small reds. Um, and so I picked that colour. I don't actually know what colour that was. It, it wasn't labelled. So it was probably labelled when it was a half or a, a full yard and the label had got separated from it. But it's a beautiful, beautiful colour. She also did have some that were just labelled up with the count because they were trial colours and, and things like that so um, it could be one of those and then from Jane Greenoff I bought the Janet Baird sampler which I loved and also the Mary Fowler sampler again which I loved because I need two more Scottish sampler reproductions <laughs> I really needed those but what can you do? What can you do when they're there waiting to be taken home? And then right at the end, we had a grab bag. We had a sort of door prize bag. Now, there were some fabulous other prizes there and there was a bit of a raffle that went on. We were originally given our raffle tickets in our boxes. Um, and then in our bags, there were 
special red envelopes in certain bags um, and so they had a prize of a pair of Monsieur Roulet scissors who was like the big prize and the lady who won those fabulous she really deserved them lovely lady um, and then oh what else was there books and um, a needlework stand there was all sorts of things but everybody got a bag with loads of stuff in it so I'll show you what was in mine Yeah. they're all slightly different they're all slightly different so some lovely cards from hands across the sea a whitney sampler catalogue whitney antiques catalogue from one of their previous exhibitions which i was absolutely over the moon about because there was a couple on ebay that i was looking at getting <coughs> and so to find one in my grab bag I was really happy um this is from Swadi Day Swadi D sorry um LM that was included as well and then one from Tabby Cat uh 2nd of July that one and also Mill on the Floss which is obviously um Michelle as well and this is a Jersey Lily. So beautiful, beautiful sample. So that was that was the door price. Amazing. Uh, amazing. Now the other thing I took home with me was my red box. Now, I'm not allowed to show you anything that's in this red box, but I do have the red box, which is the words of wisdom. So just you know what it looks like. Nicola's shown you the outside of the red box before. So if we had ordered them, we could pick them up from the weekend. We're not allowed to show them on social media until a month from the posting date, which I think is the 15th of November is the posting date. So it's going to be the 15th of December. Now, my question was, did I open it? Should I open it? Now, I did open it. <laughs> I haven't opened everything, though my theory this is this is how it panned out monday back in school long day meeting after work came home feeling a little bit you know post retreat blues and i was like why 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 have i got post retreat blues what's what's wrong and it's like it's because nobody's given me a cross stitch chart in 24 hours that's what the problem is and so what i decided to do was to open one and then the next day I've opened another one and another one. I put them all back in the envelopes. So I'm thinking the beginning of October, that is far enough away for me to have forgotten what they are and I'll mix them all up. And so when we open them in the advent, it will still be a huge surprise because I will I will see them again. So I've, I've had two bites of the cherry. That's what I've decided is my, is my, uh, my way of doing it. It was brilliant can't wait to share them with you okay i do have some other haul and actually a little bit more stitchy kindness because we've gone a little bit out of order here Whoa. what else have we got ah. oh my god i've i covered a double bed <laughs> so easily what else have i got here right let me just show you. stitchy kindness I had this lovely little pack of goodies from Stacey, the 911 Stitcher, who I have to say was one of my highlights of, of meeting. Because um, we communicated on, on Facebook, well, not Facebook, yeah, no Facebook, she's got her own group, and um, Instagram. And, um, and I just knew she would be the first person I saw when I walked into the room. And I hadn't even got into the room and she was the first person I saw. <laughs> so that was really <clears throat> really really nice and she is the loveliest loveliest lady um so yeah she uh, she gave me those and then another lovely lady and uh, i'll not say her name because i haven't asked whether i can had messaged me before the great british sampler weekend she said hey i'm coming from the states is there anything you want is there anything you want me to buy that you can't get over here and then and then we can sort it out. So I said, well, well actually, <laughs> there are. So <clears throat> I went for Brenda Gervais because they are so hard to get over here. So she she got these for me. And then uh, I think she wants my chance in return, which is absolutely fine. 
absolutely fine. I tried to try to give her money for them, but I think she wants my charts in return. So, uh, a girl in her garden. Dutch tomato pinky. At home. Uh, the maker and the mender. I really wanted this one. I love this one. A witch in her garden. And I love fall most of all. So I'm so grateful to you for getting those for me. That's that really made my uh, well made my weekend even better because they're so hard to get in the UK and the postage and everything just makes it just a little bit a little bit out of reach I think sometimes. What else have I got here? I've got other things over there as well. Oh goodness me. I have got my Fibre on a Whim fabric of the month from Patchwork Rabbit which I think came in just after I did my last floss tube. So I get a fat eighth of 32 count there. <coughs> but very often they have extras. So it very often then goes onto the website because they do all the different counts. I also bought the download of Hillside Sampling's Quaker Diamond from 1884 Stitchery because I've loved this one for a million years. Just love the fact that it's a diamond. I had got these on a stash unload spooked i've been looking for these for a while and a couple of saturdays ago um my partner forgot to turn off his alarm on saturday morning and so woke me up at god knows what o'clock and i couldn't go back to sleep so as you do i have a little look on facebook marketplace and these had been posted about three or four minutes before so i was able to grab those because i've been looking for this for ages then i had my chromatic alchemy fabric of the month which is like a a dark green. Just uh, always going to be mega cream cake. Double, double stuck. So green with almost like a bluey in the background. Beautiful. Now I had decided my fabric for the Lola Crow cross stitch, but that could also be a good shout. We'll see. And the Fox and Rabbit fabric of the month came in as well. I've posted these out, so I'm hoping that you've got yours now. This one's called Mabon Autumn Equinox, and it is it's a little bit more pinky perhaps than it's showing up, but it's beautiful, beautiful colours. And it I think would be a good fabric. For a sampler that I've acquired. I was waiting on it a couple of weeks ago but I'm not going to show it today. I'll save it. I'll save it for next week. That's it from me. I'm sure I've forgotten something and I'm sure it will come back to me straight away but I shall see you next week. Stay classy stitchers.